Clarity Meditation, Spirit and Purpose. Until now, we have covered the impact of meditation on the body, how to train the mind to think clearly, and to neutralize our emotions. In this talk, we will look at spirituality, purpose, and connections with others. We also look at the ego and contrast its role in our lives. Let me start with a couple of definitions. Religion is a set of beliefs and rituals in worship, generally directed to God or gods. There is a component of sacredness. Practices and beliefs provide the roadmap to life's purpose. Spirituality is not religion. It has many definitions. This is mine. Spirituality is connection with a higher power. On seeking alignment with that higher power, a personal sense of purpose develops, as does the importance of connecting with others. Both spirituality and religion have in common a response to our need to connect to a higher power. Some people say that connection is to God. Others believe purpose and connection come through nature, their country, or other sources. If you cannot align yourself to the thought of a higher power, use this session as a way to promote development of your best self. Meditation becomes a spiritual practice when self-awareness, compassion, and a sense of purpose become consistent with each other. When this happens, we feel greater peace and joy. A spiritual practice reduces fear and provides a sense of internal alignment along with mankind and the universe. Some call it spirit, others soul. If you believe in a higher power, you probably accept we are all linked to that higher power. Thus, logic dictates if we are each linked to God, we are all linked to every other human being. That spirit or soul is a part of that higher power. It is that part of each of us that does not experience fear, that understands that we are all connected and seeks joy and peace. It is because we have a spirit that each of us is entitled to joy and peace. The higher purpose does not mean accomplishing great deeds, being powerful or rich or any other worldly measurement. The higher purpose is about being the best self we can be in the circumstances we have been given. The definition of ego used to be something along the lines of a person's sense of self or self-importance. While this is still maintained, some modern psychologists now add to this the part of the self that views the world as a place of fear in which the self must be defended against others. The ego is in pursuit of looking good and does not take responsibility for shortcomings and uses manipulation, lies, etc. to keep eyes away from any wrongdoing. To look good to others to feel prestige and better than others are also goals of the ego. That is not to say that being successful, having a good reputation, are not worthwhile desires. However, these can be achieved without the ego. As we grow up and experience setbacks, we develop techniques to protect ourselves from criticism and attacks from others. The ego defends by trying to make us look better. The ego is the face we put on to the world. The ego is motivated by protection, even when there is no need for protection. It sees danger where none exists. It is motivated by fear. Over time, you will find that many of us use a lot of energy worrying over things that never happen. In fact, three quarters of the things we fear never come to pass. The ego searches to blame others. The ego pursues chaos to keep attention from itself. It focuses on the petty, the unimportant, and expands the useless, giving it meaning where no meaning exists. Yes, this is a judgment, but it is one that intends to put forward the idea that while these can be harmless pursuits, they become harmful when they are expanded 
in the importance within our minds and we provide too much attention to them. Can you think of an example of something in your life that perhaps is not the best use of your time and keeping you from experiencing love and peace and contentment? Meditation provides a venue in achieving clarity of the spirit and listening to the more quiet voice that is the sound of our souls speaking. Even the mundane can be raised to spirituality when it is viewed with this focus. That is, of acceptance of what is, living in the moment, and neutrality of expectations. Let me give you an example. The other day, I was standing in line to buy coffee. The lady in front of me was grumbling about the incompetence of the person at the counter taking orders. My perspective was very different than that. I believed that the person at the counter was working as quickly as humanly possible given the number of people in the lineup ahead of us. For me, this was a spiritual moment because I was able to feel one with every person in the lineup, including the person who was feeling so impatient. Have you ever felt like people are expected to be as quick as machines nowadays? Well, I do. And let's face it, we're not machines. And our expectations of people should be different than they are for equipment, computers, etc. Carl Jung is a psychologist who coined the idea of the collective unconscious. As stated at Britannica.com, the collective unconsciousness is the part of the mind containing memories and impulses of which the individual is not aware, common to mankind as a whole, and originating in the inherited structure of the brain. There are countless examples in science of where two people almost at the same time make the same discovery. Of course, the one who announces it first gets the credit. But it is interesting to note that we all can have access to that collective unconscious that belongs to all of us and to which we all contribute. We all give off energy. When you come into a room, what kind of energy do you feel? They say that communication is a two-way street. I suggest that we do not just communicate with our words. Social scientists say 80 to 85% of communication is nonverbal. I have no proof, but I believe of that 80%, a significant part of that is the energy we pick up from others. As human beings, we are connected. It is only fear that keeps us from understanding that we are all brothers and sisters brought about by our spiritual links. As you develop your own peace and calm, you will find that other people will notice it, if not on a conscious level, then on an unconscious or subconscious level. The more you can develop that spiritual calm that comes through medication, the more you can provide people with a greater sense of peace around you. Our higher self is where we hold our sense of purpose. Purpose changes over time. As a child, it might have been to love your family and thrive in school. Later, purpose may have come to be career, marital relations, parenting, or a combination of these. A sense of purpose can be as big as leaving a legacy to the next generation or as small as in fully enjoying each moment we experience. Whatever it is, it grounds you, puts things in life in context, and gives us meaning. Through our lifetime, it is important to balance the attention we give to ourself with the attention we give to others. At times, we have a number of demands made over our time, and it becomes important to balance the attentions to roles, responsibilities, and actions. Meditation helps us to clarify and change that sense of purpose as time goes by. It is through the clarity of seeing thoughts ebb and flow change in emphasis and shift through meditation that this sense of purpose becomes clear. Along with purpose 
specifics may be clarified. This answers the questions, who do I want to be? What kind of person do I want to be? In answer to the first question, we could say, I want to be a person who gets rich at all costs or lives a life of self-amusement and indulgement. If this is the case, our reply to the second question could be, it does not matter who I step on, the only right thing is for me to win. Everything else, well, I just don't care. I am only responsible for myself. I will do whatever it takes to get my way. This example of purpose is rooted in fear rather than love. A purpose rooted in love includes respect, authenticity, generosity, interconnectedness, and gratitude. Spiritual integrity is when thoughts and emotions are aligned with your purpose. Meditation provides us insight into identifying our purpose and clears out blocks in our connections with the greater power, with ourselves, and with others. There is a theory, perhaps you have heard of it, that when a person dies, he or she weighs 21 grams less. The theory goes on to say that this is the soul leaving the body. I have no idea if this is true, but we do know that energy does not die. Where does that soul spirit sit while we're alive? Again, I don't know, but for purpose of meditation, I imagine it as a halo resting on the top of my head. Our spirit is that quiet voice that leads us to our authentic self. Every day we have an opportunity to choose our spirit or ego, love or fear. As we strengthen our meditative practice, more frequently we will choose spirit and love.